Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very, very radical equation. All right. So at this point, if you want, pause the video and try this problem first. Okay. So we do have the square root of x plus 1 minus the cube root of 2x minus 6 equals 2. And we're going to be looking for all possible solutions. Okay. So now what can we do? Well, one of the things we can do is obviously we can isolate the square root, right? So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to give us the following. The cube root of 2x minus 6 plus 2. And then we can square both sides, right? If you square both sides, we're going to be getting the cube root of this squared. Uh, I can write it as 2x minus 6 squared, right? Plus 4 times this, 2x minus 6 plus 4. Okay, here we go. Now, I got a cube root of something squared and I got a cube root of something four times. So what am I going to do? Okay, one thing to do here is maybe we can just go ahead and isolate one of the cube roots, maybe this one. I can just go ahead and leave it alone on the right hand side. And everything else I can bring to the left hand side, but then switch the sides. Okay, so it's going to look like this minus 4, and then 1 minus 4 is negative 3, so we can take care of that as well. So we can write it like this. Let's write a negative 3 here, minus 3, and then forget about the 4. All right, so what can we do? Well, we do have a cube root, so what we can do is we can actually cube both sides, right? Then we're going to be getting this quantity, which is kind of giant, right? Cubed. So you can treat this as maybe a, so a minus something, a minus b cubed. You're going to use the formula, so on and so forth, right? Wait a minute. What are we doing here? We're just trying to square both sides and then cube both sides. We're going to be getting some high powers and it's going to be crazy, right? This is going to be all over the place and you're going to end up with a very difficult equation. We don't need to do any of this. There must be a better way to do it, right? Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about today. After this brief introduction, obviously, this is not a good method, right? As you can see here, squaring both sides, cubing both sides is going to complicate matters. So let's go ahead and forget about all this. All right. Let's go ahead and delete that and start over with a much better method. So what are we going to do? We're going to do the following. We're going to use one of the most powerful methods in mathematics. And what is it called? Starts with S. It's called substitution. Now, you're going to realize, I hope, after this video that substitution is so powerful, especially with radical equations like this. And you will see more examples later on. Substitution is very, very powerful. Okay, so let's go ahead and proceed. So what am I going to do first? Okay, I'm going to call this guy A and call this guy B. Now, what is so good about this? Well, it just gives me something nice because this means A minus B is equal to 2. You see how simple that is? Well, you ended up with two variables, but don't worry. We're going to take care of that. Okay, what is next? The next step is going to be taking care of this in a better way, of course. Let's write down what we have, and then we'll go from there. So what do I have now? I have a being equal square root of x plus 1, which means if I square both sides, then I'll be getting a squared is equal to x plus 1. Beautiful. What do I have for b? Well, I do have b being equal to the cube root of 2x minus 6. If I cube both sides, now this cubing is not that dangerous as well as the other one because it's going to give us a single nice expression. Okay, awesome. So a squared equals this and b cubed equals that. So what about it? Okay, here's what we're going to do now. From both of these equations, we are going to isolate x, right? Okay, and then let's see what happens after that. Okay, so what I can do is I can, okay, from the first equation... What can I do? I can go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides. And that's going to give me x equals a squared minus 1. Nice. Okay. Let's save that. 
from the second equation, what I can do is I can actually add 6 to both sides. And that's going to give me b cubed plus 6. And then I can divide both sides by 2. And that's going to give me x again. So what's so good about getting x in terms of a and b separately? Well, if two things are equal to the same thing, and I've said this before, right? If two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal. So that means that these two quantities are equal to each other. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and write that down. So we get b cubed plus 6 over 2 equals a squared minus 1. Okay, so how can I proceed from here? Well, I can multiply both sides by 2. That's going to give me b cubed plus 6 equals 2a squared minus 2. Awesome. Okay. What else can I do? Well, in addition to this equation, I also have something else, don't I? Let's not forget about this. That was our first thing, right? Okay. So in addition to this, I have a minus b equals 2. So now, let's go ahead and consider the system. Now, you might be saying, okay, you had a single equation. Now, you have a system with two variables. So, what's the problem? The initial equation was very hard to solve, but right now, this should be easier to solve. But how do we solve this equation, right? I mean, how do we solve the system? Well, one of the things I can do from the second equation is, again, one of the most powerful methods using substitution. So I can isolate A and write it in terms of B. So A equals B plus 2. And this is going to be super important because what we're going to do is we're going to substitute the A in the first equation with that. Okay? Let's see how this goes. So in my first equation, I have 2A squared minus 2. So B is going to stay. I will replace A with B plus 2, and then things are going to get better. You see that? Okay, awesome. Now, I have a single equation. You see, I started with a single variable that was hard to solve with lots of radicals. Then I turned it into a system by using substitution. And then I took that substitution, I made a system, and I'm using substitution to solve that system. And now I ended up with an equation in a single variable. Beautiful. Okay, now let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. This is going to give me b cubed plus 6 is equal to 2 times b squared plus 4b plus 4 minus 2. b cubed plus 6 is equal to 2b squared plus 8b plus 8 minus 2, which is 6. Okay, one of the things that's really cool about this equation is that 6 cancels out. Beautiful. When constants cancel out, then I can just, I get a nicer equation from here. And I can reduce the power, actually. I can reduce the degree. So, put everything on the left-hand side and factor out a b. Beautiful. b squared minus 2b, or not 2b, minus 8 is equal to 0. Awesome. What am I going to do here? Well, I do have a product which is equal to zero, meaning that I get two results from here, one of which is b equals zero, and then second one is b squared minus 2b minus a. But let's do it this way. I can factor this, right? There are two numbers whose product is negative 8, and those numbers are b minus 4 and b plus 2. So this is a cubic equation with no constants. Therefore, it's very easy to solve, just like a quadratic, okay? And, and to make matters better, it is factorable. Beautiful. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to write each solution, but remember, we were trying to solve for x, not, not for b, right? So let's go ahead and consider each situation. If b is equal to 0, what happens? Let's see. And how do I know what happens? I got to go back here. And consider this here. The relationship between B and X. Or if you want to make it even better, we can use this one, right? X is equal to B cubed plus 6 divided by 2. Okay, 
Let's write that down here. X is equal to B cubed plus 6 divided by 2, right? Okay, so if B is equal to 0, then X is equal to 3. Awesome. That's my first solution. And then if B is equal to 4, then X is equal to what? Let's see. 4 cubed is 64 plus 6 is 70 divided by 2 is 35. That's kind of unexpected, right? Like what? 35? Where does that come from? Okay. Well, it comes from the equation. What can I do? And then if B equals negative 2, as you know from here, then we get negative 2 cubed, which is equal to negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So these are all the solutions and we are done. Okay. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay. This is a very interesting method to solve these kinds of equations. And here's the results. We have three solutions, 3, 35, and negative 1. But you might want to go ahead and check these solutions because we do have a square root, right? What if it doesn't work? Exactly. That's what you got to do. Okay. Let's go ahead and check it out. X equals 3. Does that work? Well, if x equals 3, then I get 3 plus 1, which is 4. From the square root, I get 2. Let me do the checking here. If I plug in x equals um, 3 here, then I'll be getting 0. So 2 minus 0 is equal to 2. It checks. Beautiful. What if x equals 35? 35 plus 1 is 36. The square root of 36 is 6. 35 plus 35 times 2 is 70. 70 minus 6 is 64. The cube root of 64 is what? 4. That's equal to 2. Yep, that's right. And if x equals negative 1, the, this first guy becomes 0. And you plug in negative 1 here, you get negative 8. Negative cube root of negative 8, which is negative 2. Negative negative 2 is equal to 2. That's also true. So all the solutions will work. Actually, you can safely say that since I have a square root of x plus 1, the domain is negative 1 to infinity. So negative 1 is included. So all our solutions are included. All right. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then. Take care. Bye-bye. See you in the Geometry Puzzle video. Take care.